Ladies and gentlemen, hello. I hope you are all hearing me well. We are about to start in a second. Greg, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Great, yes. We can we can hear each other. So hello. Uh, I hope I hope you can all hear us. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our conference. Uh, this is the final conference of our three and a half year project, which was funded by the Interreg Central Europe program. And our project is called Biocompac CE. Uh, and throughout the next three days of our conference, uh, you will learn what the project is about, what are the project goals, what are the outputs, and uh, most importantly, um, how we can help you in the future with different set of tools um, that we develop throughout this project lifetime. Uh, our final conference was actually planned as a real and tangible event with direct human interaction. Unfortunately, uh, as we all know, 2020 had a different idea, uh, but we had to adapt uh, and therefore uh, this event is a 100% online affair with uh, all the speakers um, connecting to the, to the conference remotely. Even so, we really hope that what we plan will be a fascinating journey um, into the value chain of biocomposite packaging and that you will find our program um, interesting and useful. Uh, my name is Greg Ganczewski. I'm from Łukasiewicz Research Network Institute of Biopolymers and Chemical Fibers in Warsaw, Poland. And I am a project partner and the leader of Work Package 3, which I will talk more about on day three. Uh, I will also be your host for the next three days of our conference. And before we move on to more attractive issues, I just have a couple of uh, technical points to make. So first of all, for this conference, uh, as, you, as you can see, we are using the uh, platform called ClickMeeting. This is a very flexible and fast working online meeting platform. And even if you haven't used it before, um, you, it's not really different from all the other online platforms that you're probably accustomed to. So uh, I'm hoping that you won't have any, uh, any problems with using the platform. Uh, our conference lasts for three days uh, with approximately three hours for each day. Uh, and we have plenty of breaks and downtime to keep you engaged and hopefully not bored. Uh, and the link for the conference is the same for all three days. So the same link that you clicked on uh, today uh, will be the same one for tomorrow and the same one for uh, Wednesday as well. Uh, also, um, um, our conference has, uh, we have planned question and answer sessions where you can interact with uh, our speakers. Uh, and in order to make the whole experience friendly for all users, we decided to use the chat for this purpose. And you can you can find the chat on your right hand side. Uh, and please send all the questions and comments that you have whenever you feel like it. Uh, and uh, I will read the questions for the respective speakers in the respective question analysis slots. Uh, the chat is moderated uh, and you can uh, also post all your technical problems there. And we have Kasia uh, who's hiding uh, behind the name of uh, Biocompact Support. Uh, in there and she will try to help you as much as possible. Uh, also, uh, very importantly, our conference is recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube uh, soon after the conference is finished. And you will get an email reminder with the link if you want to uh, refresh and uh, watch it again. Uh, so uh, I really hope uh, that everything is clear and if you have any questions, just ask away on a chat. Uh, and with this out of the way, I'm inviting uh, Andre Kshan, who is the project leader, um, to welcome you and officially tell you a few words about our project. So, Andre, uh, the virtual floor is yours. Uh, thank you and enjoy. Okay, thank you very much, Greg. Uh, I have to thank you and the team for putting this together. Um, uh, I think uh, all these conferences are possibly very easy, practical, but on the other hand, there's a lot of preparation in the background and a lot of technical issues. So thank you very, very much for organizing it. Uh, on the other hand, I'm sorry that uh, we're not all in Warsaw as was planned. Uh, so uh, we'll have to wait for another time and use this opportunity to move ahead. But I think it's giving us um, new possibilities, opportunities. And in fact, that's what we're looking at. In, uh, projects like ours. Um, I would like to welcome everybody to this conference. Um, if you're coming from any side, from any country, outside of Central Europe, inside of Central Europe, um, any part of the value chain, welcome. Please stay with us. Uh, this conference will go on for three days. And as you've seen, we've scheduled the time so that 
everybody could participate, could could take a look. It will not take a whole day out of your schedule. And I'm absolutely certain that it will have parts that will be of interest for everybody. It's broad enough, I think. Uh, and we'll try to, in these three days, shed light on what we were doing, why we were doing it, and what did we figure out? And also, where this thing will be heading in the future. Because although a project will be finished, that's not the end of our activities. It's, in fact, a start of some of our activities. And we'll get to that through the uh, schedule of the, of the uh, three days. Well, um, as Greg said, my name is Andrei Karjan. I had the privilege of being the coordinator of this project. I'm very, very proud of the team that's uh, worked in it. Uh, and I am coming from the National Institute of Chemistry in Ljubljana, Slovenia. So I'm a chemist by background and polymer chemist. So in our topics, um, I probably can uh, comment a fair bit, I hope, on polymers, but perhaps less on some other points. But I will start with other points. Uh, let me now move. Okay, yes. And I would like to um, set the stage in a relatively broad way of what we're doing, why we're doing it. And, um, you know, just, just a few days I was uh, talking with somebody and we agreed that we are living in interesting times. Uh, just the way how we are meeting is um, testimony of that. Um, and, you know, we both remembered of the Chinese proverb, may you live in interesting times as some sort of a curse. I don't think it's a curse, but it is interesting and I see it more as an opportunity. But what is our time? Why, why am I saying it's interesting? I've put together several challenges that we're living through. And they, I think, all relate to what we're doing, what we're doing in the project as well. So the most broad one, I think, is climate change. Climate change is happening. We have a lot of information that um, uh, there are changes going on, particularly can be monitored in the uh, temperatures that we're experiencing in the changed climate, and also in the weather events, um, such as drought or storms, resulting in floods and so on, that seem to be more and more frequent and are changing our environment. Of course, this is, connected to what people are doing. It's an anthropogenic uh, effect, and we are part of it. For a very long period, we had no idea, or humanity had no idea, uh, of what is happening. But I think now, actually, it's quite clear what is happening, and we need to define answers, we need to define measures, and we need to act on it. And this is one of the great challenges, challenges of our time, really. And we need to find ourselves in this. If I uh, go on to the next one, resource consumption, very strongly linked to climate change. We are using a lot more resources than we used to. Um, I think from the 1970s till today, our resource use, and this is material resource, mineral and other, has increased more than threefold. The population has increased twofold. Our material demands are up, I think, 3.5, uh, 3.4 times. And this is, um, of course, not spread evenly. But if I just look here at the, uh, one of these little shopping carts that are shown on the screen, uh, particularly, let's say, for upper middle income um, class of people, we've gone from something that was um, ton per capita, six 
six tons per capita in 1970 to 20 tons per capita today. These are huge increases. And of course, with the grow in the population that's shown on the top, uh, this, this is just not sustainable. And we need to find answers. We know that a lot of people are moving into a better life uh, towards a more, uh, let's say, wealthy, comfortable, advanced uh, life. And that, up till now at least, but now as well, uh, demands a lot of materials. Material support, resource support, and effectively we just don't have those. So we need to make a change. And if we just extrapolate what we're doing, we can see on the bottom part of the screen how much more we will need, how many more resources we will require. From, let's say, material ex extraction, but also to land use, water use, and uh, we just don't have this. So if we combine resource consumption, and of course that also includes energy and carbon emissions, CO2, and we add the climate change that I was mentioning before, then all of a sudden we're in a relatively tight box that we have to find an answer to. On top of that, we can look at today. These are what I've mentioned now. There have been more general trends. Not nice trends, but, but long-lasting uh, that we know of them. This year, we were um, surprised by another challenge, the pandemic. This uh, cute ball uh, virus that's shown on the top of the screen has caught us by surprise, and it has results. It has effects. You've probably noticed how much more plastic packaging is used. Plastic packaging in cases where we didn't use it. All of a sudden, you will find, I don't know, a piece of bread individually packed, a slice of bread individually packed for your safety to make it possible that you can still enjoy comforts, food, and so on in a safe way, not to get infected. Um, I like in, you know, apostrophes, the sign uh, that I found actually uh, online where from a coffee shop, obviously, where they're saying that, well, unfortunately, due to the current situation, um, they will stop using reusable coffee cups. We've gone to great efforts to limit single-use plastics or products that are single-use plastics. And now all of a sudden, we've figured out that we need plastics. Plastics serve us. Packaging serves us. And we're using actually even more than we did before. We can say this is a temporary blip, but I think it's also a an important development that should tell us and show us in a very realistic way that we need these products. I very often you know, meet people that say, well, we don't really need this. I can be without packaging. But we've shown this year that we need these things. So we just have to really live with them and make them better. And that's, in fact, what our project is also about. I would say economic challenges are around as well. Central and Eastern Europe, Central Europe has enjoyed a nice period up till the time when COVID came around. We've seen uh, good growth. Um, things were looking good. Things were moving ahead. Uh, we're, we're exposed to competition constantly, but we were, we were finding our way in this competition. This is a global competition. We're competing not only among ourselves and in Europe, but also globally. And Europe is competing globally. And right now, we see actually a, a danger for our competitive position. Um, COVID is not hitting 
only Central Europe or Europe indeed, but others as well. But this is again, at the same time, a danger and an opportunity. How will we get through this? And this is really important to uh, something I'll be talking about later in the day. Um, if, you are doing, if your economy is doing well, then of course it's easier to innovate, it's easier to move ahead, it's easier to invest. Um, you can afford more and you can actually have better results, of course. If you're strapped for money, if you're in a recession, if uh, employment becomes a question, uh, well, then there are other priorities maybe, and this can also affect where we're going. I have uh, a very deep belief in Central Europe and in Europe altogether. So I'm sure that Europe will come out of this on top, but it will not happen just by itself, but rather we have to steer it in that direction. And as a final challenge that I'd like to show, of course, are societal and political changes. Europe has gone through Brexit or is still in fact going through Brexit. We are not yet sure what will happen out of that. And we've seen a lot of pictures like the one below for whatever reason, either people not liking masks or not liking their governments or having other issues or don't not liking other people or what they're doing. It doesn't really matter. This is part of the whole framework within which we want to advance. And why am I mentioning all these topics? I'm not, I'm not trying to be negative. I believe we can overcome all of these, but I think it's, it's important to, um, put our efforts into some context. Despite doing something very specific within a, let's say, very limited group, we have to understand in what context we are acting so that we can put it in the right way and get the most out of it. I'm not really pessimistic. Everybody who knows me knows that I'm a optimist that will never stop. And I think we have great answers to all of these challenges for this in interesting time. I just put some here on the screen and I can go through them very quickly. You will notice that I believe that the, the flag of the European Union uh, offers really a lot to us. I'm coming from a small country so perhaps we understand that even more, what uh, the EU brings. But I think really uh, the EU level brings us together and allows us to do much, much more. And we've done that within the project as well. That is the core principle of our partnership. We have brought together capacities and knowledges that complement each other and allow us to do more than we would be able to do by ourselves. And in fact, that we're all here online thinking about this, talking about this and, and going on in a common direction uh, proves that. So just to go through, we have a great big new policy push on the Green Deal that goes from basic research two applications and is well funded. The challenges I mentioned before are all in the Green Deal um, context. So doing the Green Deal program well will contribute to tackling all of those challenges. We have a structure within which we can do that. We, ha we have, for example, Interreg Europe. And if you just look at what the topics are, uh, and you can understand then the new four color logo of Interreg Europe, you can see research, you can see competitiveness, environment, and a low carbon economy. These are all tackling the challenges 
that I mentioned before. Then we have Horizon, Horizon continuing in a new financial um, uh, perspective with even higher ambitions. We have a structure of macro-regional strategies. I've named them over there. For example, Slovenia is very, very lucky to be participant in several of these. We have a European initiative, and I believe this is a leading global initiative in the circular economy. Several years ago, there was no talk about circular economy. Maybe there was recycling, but not a circular economy as, a, as an idea. This was brought ahead by um, uh, the commissioner, Janis Potocnik, and I'm extremely proud that he's Slovenian. And I'm extremely happy that circular economy caught on. And now I hear it coming from different sides of the world. It's coming from the US, they're talking about circularity and so on. This was a European idea and we're ahead on it. We got blue growth focusing on the blue economy, uh, another opportunity. And, and, I, and all this together really gives me great optimism that we can deal with the challenges. Now, of course, what does that have to do with our project? Well, to start with that, um, I think first this enigmatic name, Biocompact CE, should be uh, read in full. And the full title is much longer, and I will not comment on it because I was a co-author of it, but it's much longer. Developing and strengthening cross-sectoral linkages among actors in sustainable biocomposite packaging innovation systems in a central Europe circular economy. There are three main aspects here that I would like to point out that they're underlined. One is to create linkages among different people that possibly don't talk. They're in different countries, they're in different sectors, they're in different parts of the value chain. And they don't talk, and we have to make them talk to make the system work. The other point is a sustainable biocomposite packaging. Packaging is, is really not a byword for sustainable normally. Packaging has a really short time li lifetime, becomes waste very, very quickly, and anybody who's involved in waste management knows very well that packaging is a challenge that's not easily solved. We use a lot of packaging. It serves us very well. It saves agricultural products and food and other products. So it has a purpose. We cannot get rid of it. And as I said, now in the time of COVID, we can see that we need the packaging. We can't just get rid of it. It'd be really nice if we could, but there are practical reasons. So sustainable packaging based on biocomposites. And we're in Central Europe. Yes, we're in Central Europe. And as I said, I have a great belief in this area. This area has a lot of ideas, a lot of capacity, educated workforces, uh, and, and a culture of innovation culture of being, of working, being productive. And I think that will take us ahead. And we can, we can participate and contribute very strongly to the circular economy and the Green Deal, and also to blue growth, to be very honest. So our direct challenge is packaging made from paper and plastics. We have a lot of products today that are made of paper and plastics because these two materials are complementary. Paper goes very well together with plastics. And for example, on a rainy day, or if you're carrying around something wet, well, you can understand that plastics is better than paper. On the other hand, if you want a renewable resource, if you want a very good recycling possibility, then perhaps paper is better 
but it shouldn't rain maybe that day. When you buy your food, you very often will get it packaged in a, in a multi-material product packaging that you will appreciate. The person at the cashiers will appreciate because they can also look at it. You can decide which sandwich you want to take or which roll or bun or anything like that. You can see if it's tasty looking. At the cashier, they'll see what you bought. They can go ahead. You will possibly even eat the sandwich directly out of it and then throw it away. But this waste that's been created, although it's such a great functional product, is an obstacle to circular resource use, which is one of the challenges or goals that we have at the European level. It combines two materials that can be recycled, but in such a way that they become a problem for the recycling. So we need to solve that. But it's not just that, it's also economic opportunity that these products uh, represent. By making packaging better, sustainable, bio-based, or biocompatible, if you wish, uh, you're opening a new niche. And I think Central Europe is very well equipped to use it. So our project has tried to address this particular point, which goes very, very well in the concept that I've, I've of challenges uh, and of today's world, really, that I've presented before. So despite us doing a very small but very specific uh, project and topic, I think that's the way ahead to go within the con sort of concept of global challenges and finding the area where you can be active and make an impact, a real impact, a real impact that will benefit the region, the people, the industry, and the environment. I think that's how to go. And I'm very actually proud that we've done that. This brings us to what the real goal and result of our project is. It wasn't making a strategy. It wasn't making an overview or analyzing or just getting people to talk. That was not the point. The point was to come to something that will live after the end of the project. And that is actually a virtual expert group from the region that can help industry to make the transition towards sustainable packaging and other sustainable products made from different materials, particularly paper and plastic. We've developed the concept We've developed the ideas, what is good and what is not, under what conditions. We've tried it together with companies, how we can help, how this group coming from different countries with all sorts of knowledge, complementary knowledge, can help. We've tried it and we now have it. And the paper biopac uh, group will in fact start doing this after the end of the project. So maybe this is not a final conference, maybe it's a stepping stone, it's a midpoint, I would say, or perhaps even it's actually a starting point for the impact that we want to reach with our work and with our project. So in the next two days, we will look into, or three days, today and the next two days, we will look into the path that we took that brought us here and made it possible for us to look at those challenges I started with, with optimism, knowing that we've done our part and if we all do it, we can overcome them and go into a good, nice, healthy, safe, prosperous and happy future. So with that, I would uh, finish.
And Greg, uh, I give the word back to you. If there are any questions or comments, of course, you're the moderator, you take charge. Thank you.